In the real world, when we want to move a fluid through a pipe, we encounter losses. We incur frictional losses due to uh, the molecules interacting and shearing against the sides of the pipes that we're working with. And so what a chemical engineer would need to do in practice is determine how big of a pressure difference is needed to move a fluid through a given length of pipe. And so what I'm going to do in this video is take you guys through how we can use Moody diagrams to determine the frictional losses that will occur. And with that information, we can determine the pressure loss. And with that pressure loss, we can get an idea of how big of a compressor or a pump will be required to actually move fluid through a pipe at a rate that we need it. And so if you're confident, you can pause the video now and see if you can do this example problem. And if not, I'm going to walk through it anyway. So um, the first thing we're going to do is dissect our problem statement. So the first thing we're told is that we have water flowing through a 0.25 diameter, 100 meter in length cast iron pipe at a rate of 3.6 meters per second. And our goal is to figure out what is the pressure drop that we're realizing by pushing water through this length of pipe um, under these conditions. And I hope that this hint proves useful. We're told that the dynamic viscosity of water is equivalent to 8.9 times 10 to the minus fourth Pascal seconds, and water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And both these values are tabulated, and hopefully what they hint at is that the first thing we're gonna be doing in using a Moody diagram and determining what the pressure loss will be is figuring out what the Reynolds number will be. And so step one is to calculate Reynolds number, which we hopefully know is rho V D over mu. In other words, the density of our fluid times the velocity of our fluid times the diameter of the pipe we're interested in divided by the dynamic viscosity. And if you plug in these values, what you'll find is that we arrive at a Reynolds number of approximately one times 10 to the six. And Reynolds number is a dimensionless quantity, and its purpose is to tell us whether or not we are in the turbulent or laminar regimes. And now that we have determined what our Reynolds number is, the next step is to look up the material property of cast iron. And from the Moody plot that we have on the left here, we're going to note how um, iron right here has a uh, epsilon value, and very important to look at the dimensions here, of 0 0.15 millimeters. And so the relative roughness that we care about, I'll call it RR, is equal to epsilon over D, which is equal to, and we're going to have to convert the dimensions of our diameter into millimeters. So epsilon we were told was 0 0.15 millimeters, and the diameter of our pipe in millimeters will be 250 millimeters. And this tells us that our relative roughness term has a value of 0 0.0006, in other words, six times 10 to the fourth. And so now that we have determined our Reynolds number and our relative roughness value, we can now look at our Moody diagram to begin figuring out what our friction factor will be. And so uh, what we see is at a value of 1 times 10 to the 6, we are on this line here in our Moody diagram. And at a relative roughness value of uh, 6 times 10 to the 4, we are on this line here. And so um, it is really just a matter of kind of looking for the intersection of these two lines. We see that we kind of fall on this line conveniently here. And if we didn't, you'd have to do some interpolation. Um, but this line that corresponds roughly to five times 10 to the minus fourth is close enough for our purposes that we can guess that uh, our friction factor, I abbreviated FF, will be somewhere in the range of 0 0.15 to 0. Point, or I'm sorry, 0 0.015 to 0 0.02. And so I'm going to call this uh, 0 
zero one seven or actually one eight and it is important to recognize that we are dealing with uh, logarithmic scales here so uh, just because you're at the midpoint between two points does not mean you're halfway um, actually so friction factor defined we now know um, with the friction factor we can determine what our pressure loss will be and so delta p loss is equivalent to your friction factor times the length of your pipe divided by your diameter of your pipe times one half times the density of your fluid times the velocity of your fluid squared and if you plug in the numbers uh, I will put F's here to denote that these are fluid properties um, and these are uh, length of the pipe diameter of the pipe uh, we will arrive at a value of 93 kilopascals and 93 kilopascals is approximately slightly less than one atmosphere so i'll call it 0 0.9 atmospheres and so this is the kind of pressure loss due to frictional losses we would expect to see if we were flowing water through a pipe at this rate and so um, we turn to the moody's diagram in order to get our friction factor this was kind of the uh, longest part of this uh, problem and the friction factor was both a function of reynolds number as well as the material that we made our pipe out of so if you're a chemical engineer and you wanted to make your process more efficient it might be worth your time to invest in using uh, pipes that have lower uh, epsilon values to go with and but it's all kind of a risk versus reward and investment uh, type of deal so i hope you guys find this video useful let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching